I'm going to show you exactly how to get a credit limit increase on your Capital One credit card with no hard inquiry. Now we were in New Orleans literally two nights ago and now we are in Virginia because my son's karate tournament slash award ceremony is in this town. So I had to come, come out here to see my son win this amazing award and I'm still going to give you the sauce about Capital One. We're just missing the gold microphone, that's just about it. But let's talk about Capital One because this is huge. A lot of people do not understand the value of having Capital One on your credit reports. It is the most valuable thing you can actually possibly do because Capital One is one of the largest subprime lenders in the United States. And having them on your credit report looks amazing because you wanna have at least anywhere from two to five large banks on your credit reports. And I'm talking about, so now we're counting Capital One. Now you can also get American Express, Citibank, and then Discover. And then the final piece is going to be Chase Bank. Having those five lenders or just one or three or all five of them on your credit reports shows that you are a responsible borrower. So now I'm gonna teach you exactly how to get all the things you need from Capital One and the first piece being that credit limit increase. So make sure you watch till the end. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike the Credit Guy. I'm the owner and founder of Limitless Culture. We created the most advanced DIY credit management system in the industry. Our system allows you to take control of your credit, creating custom Metro 2 attack letters every single round, never using templates for only $55.99 a month. Link is always going to be in the description. Now let's get into this video. I want you to know something very important. If you have Capital One and you're rebuilding your credit or you're already past that stage and you're in a good position in life, but if you're rebuilding your credit, you need to understand something. Having Capital One on your credit profile is amazing and you made the best choice possible because they are in fact one of the largest subprime lenders in the United States and they will help you along your journey, meaning they're gonna help you get credit line increases, get better credit cards, auto loans. You can do so many things with Capital One. You can do a check-in and savings. I talked about that on one of my last videos. It's really important to understand where you stand in the financial realm. And a lot of people don't talk about that. They say, Capital One is stingy. They don't wanna give me any money. That's not true. The problem is you have never been taught how to actually obtain all the things you need properly with Capital One and how to move properly. All the pros and the cons, because listen, I made a lot of mistakes along the way when I got my first credit cards and that was with Capital One. What I also did is I went and got a Credit One. Don't get that. And I don't want you to get an open sky. You don't need that. And you don't need to get a first premiere. Keep all of those low limit credit cards off of your credit profile because every time that you go and apply for a credit card, they're going to look at your credit profile. If you have a bunch of low limit credit cards, guess what? they're gonna wanna give you only low limit credit cards. So this is why we need to work to continue to get Capital One to raise those credit limits on your active Capital One credit cards. If you have the platinum secured one, that's okay. We're gonna get you to get it unsecured and continuing to use it properly is the key. Now, what I mean by that is, you've probably heard people always say, only use 10% of your credit, only use 20, never use more than 30. No, none of that matters. Throw it out the window, throw it in the trash where that belongs. Because at the end of the day, you have to understand something. Let's say hypothetically, you have a $500 credit limit and you only use $20 a month. Why would any lender want to give you more money? You're not showing them that you need it, that you're using it. Remember here, the key is what you're using and what you need to do is use the card responsibly. And the golden rule is, if you do not have the cash to pay it off immediately, do not use the credit card. But if you're already gonna pay your light bill and you're already budgeted for that and you have the money in the bank, why would you not use your credit card instead and build that relationship even stronger with the actual bank that you're actually, you have your credit card with, i.e. Capital One. You can use it for your car insurance, your light bill, all your utilities, your cell phone bill, 
and just pay them off in full every single month. If you have a $300 credit limit, you can use $300 as many times as you can responsibly and then pay it off in full. So now you took a $300 credit limit and you use $900 a month because you paid it off because you can in fact make one payment a day with Capital One. You can pay it off as long as, as, long as you keep doing that. Just keep paying it off consistently and this is exactly what Capital One or any bank likes to see. This is where people go wrong. They're not using the credit card properly. That's part number one. Last part is the most important. So here's part two. Capital One is going to offer you a second card. Like, let's say for instance, as an example, if you start off with a secured platinum card, they're gonna offer you a secondary card. Do not take it. If you got the Quicksilver one or the Quicksilver, they may offer you a second card. Do not take it. You want to make the relationship strong with the first card because you want to continue to raise that credit limit so when you are ready to go get another credit card from another credit card company, guess what? Instead of you having a $300 or a $500 credit card, now you have a $1,000, $1,500, or $3,000 credit limit, and now that other bank is going to be willing to give you a higher limit just when you start right off the gate. But if you have a $300 and then another $500, well, what do you expect? The bank is going to give you another low limit credit card, and that's not what we want. We want them to graduate the unsecured card sorry, the secured card to unsecured, or we want them to continue to raise that credit limit until we get it to a good starting point so we can go get another credit card from another bank, whether it be a bank or a credit union. Did you know as soon as you walk into a physical Capital One branch, there is an actual like button? No, there actually isn't, but this channel definitely has a like button. So make sure you smash that like button and make sure that you subscribe because we're trying to get to a million subscribers and we cannot do it without you. I want you to stick to this exact plan for the rest of your life when you're banking with Capital One. The golden rule is you want them to raise your credit limit every six months. What I'm about to teach you is the exact same steps on how to request that credit limit increase. But remember, if it doesn't happen right out the gate, don't stress. Stick to my rule, use the credit card, pay it off in full every single month for a minimum of six months. And then you come back and you can ask for a credit limit increase every six months and guess what? There's no hard inquiry. Never ever call Capital One and request a credit limit increase over the phone because that will cause a hard inquiry. You want to go directly inside of the app and then you request it there. And that's the exact place where you will not get a hard inquiry with Capital One. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to open up the Capital One app. Now we're gonna choose the card that you want to request a credit limit increase on. So once you find that card, you're gonna go to the very bottom right corner. We're gonna put these all up on the screen so you can see them. You're gonna click on profile. Once you click on profile, then the next screen will say account settings and features. Click on that button. Then the next move is going to be request credit limit increase. It's really just this simple. And once you put, once you hit that, then it's going to ask you a series of questions. The first important question it's going to ask you is going to be your employment status. Never, ever, ever put that you're self-employed. If you own a business, you just put that you are an actual employee because at the end of the day, you are an employee of your business. If you put that you are self-employed, this will limit your credit limit increases and they will keep a tight watch on you and they can potentially do what's what we call a financial review. We don't want none of that nonsense. So always put that you're employed. Now, when I ask you if you are in fact self-employed and ask you what your position is, you can put managing director, a managing partner, or you can put chief executive officer. If that's what you want to do. You don't necessarily have to put that big title, but managing director is pretty simple. And remember, the next step is going to be how much you make. This is your annual income, and you want to make sure that you do not put too much. Now, why do I say that? 
Because as an example, if you make over $120,000 a month and you request a credit limit increase or when you apply for a credit card, people automatically think, because if I put more on my application, they'll give me more. No, they're going to give you based what's on your credit reports. So if you got a bunch of low limit credit cards, they're still going to give you a low limit. If you got a bunch of high limit credit cards, they're going to have a higher chance of giving you a high limit. It depends on what's on your credit reports. Always remember that. So if you make $120,000 a year, you want to start off by putting, uh, I make $60,000 a year. And then every time that you go for a credit limit increase every six months or once a year, then you incrementally increase it responsibly because you're not lying because at the end of the day, you could be making more than what you actually post because you're not actually showing that you make bonuses or your full salary. But remember, never ever put some crazy large amount because then you're not going to give yourself room to grow. And the final step is going to be to just slide that bar. But before you do that, wait, wait. You want to make sure that you are not actually holding a balance with Capital One. If you're requesting a specific credit card limit increase and you have multiple credit cards, you really truly want to make sure that you're not carrying a balance. Clear out that balance and let it post and let it show that your actual credit limit is full and there is no balance reporting at Capital One. This will increase your chances of getting a credit limit increase. Now listen, don't come for me in the comments saying, I requested it and they gave me a credit limit increase. That's perfectly fine, but we do not want to reduce any of the chance that they do not give this to us. So the more opportunity we have, we want to make sure we make all the right choices so we get that credit limit increase. I almost forgot to tell you one last thing. I want you to know exactly how the tier system works with Capital One. So if you're rebuilding your credit or you're just already in a good position with your credit and you need to understand how or what credit card to get next, understand that it all starts at the very bottom. Every credit card that is designed with Capital One is designed for your credit profile. So if you're at the very bottom of your credit score and it's horrible, you got jacked up credit, you start off with a secured card, which is the platinum secured, or you'll start off with the platinum unsecured. So it goes platinum secured, then platinum unsecured. And then the next one is gonna be your actual Quicksilver one. And then after that is the Quicksilver. Then after that is the saver one. And then after that's the saver card. And then after that is the actual venture card, then the venture one, and then the venture X. As you can see, every single one of these credit, credit cards are designed for specific credit scores and specific credit profiles. You're not gonna go from the Platinum Secured all the way up to the Venture X. It just doesn't work like that with Capital One. Build up your trust, build up that credit profile, and build up that credit score. And that's how you get to the very top of the tier with Capital One. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's exactly how you get a credit limit increase with Capital One. And I hope I gave you all the data points so you can be 100% successful. If there's something else you want me to talk about, drop it in the comments section. Drop some emojis in there so we can get this video going so more people can learn exactly how to maneuver with Capital One and understand that it is, in fact, a great bank to be with. And make sure that you watch the next two videos because those are recommended by YouTube. And don't forget, subscribe to increase your credit score.